Welcome to Meguiar's Car Crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or gal, if you love cars, you're a car guy. And this is Car Crazy Central shouting the passion that 30 million of us who are car guys across America and tens of millions more around the world share in common, no matter what kind of cars we love. Join us as we focus on this emotion of being car crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple, that's right, we want to make you just a little more crazy! Doheny is a very special place, 350 days a year, fantastic weather, couldn't pick a better spot for the show. Yeah, the station will be 25 years old in October, so it's got uh, you know, got roots in Orange County. The DOC stands for Dynamic Orange County, and, and between the Woody and, uh, and the programming we're doing and trying to focus on the surf culture and just you know, just good good fun. Well, it's, it's true supply and demand, and there's a lot more demand than there is supply. Very people that can afford the cars uh, have to be having jobs and stuff like that. They can't be the surf yeah. bums anymore. And now our host, Barry McGuire. Welcome to another special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. You may or may not know that in addition to being a car guy, I'm also a beach bum. I actually live on the beach in Southern California. Today we're at Doheny State Beach in Orange County. And, you know, when you go to the beach around here, you're often hanging out with car guys. Today just happens to be a Woody show, the Doheny Wood uh, Woody Show, one of the largest shows for Woodies in the entire West Coast. I love the genre of Woodies because it's a small part of the hobby, but one of the most passionate. And I want you to experience it up close and personal right now. Okay, come on with me. If you're a member of a car club, you know how much work goes into creating all kinds of activities for clubs, having those meetings on a weekly or monthly basis. Particularly if you put on a event of this magnitude, the Southern California Woody Club is a, is a big club. Johnny Foch is the man in charge. You are the president. You've been uh, on the executive committee. How many years do you have to work up to get to be president? I've been active in the club for about eight. It took about five years to work five up Five years in the president. executive committee, vice president now, yes. president for this last year. You've been a busy guy. As you can tell by the loss of voice. <laughs> well, you've been on that microphone a lot this morning. This morning and last night. Yeah. Uh, how many years for this event here at Doheny? This is our ninth year. Wow. And uh, I, I've, I've lost track of how many cars coming on the property, but there's a lot of cars here today. I would believe we, we passed 175 with ins and outs. How many members in the Southern California region? We have just over 300 members active in the club. This venue is so very special. I mean, you think of Woody, you think of the beach, you think of the palm trees right behind us. Our viewers can see that as we speak. Doheny is a very special place. 350 days a year, fantastic weather. Couldn't pick a better spot for the show. Great cars here. I mean, just absolutely Beautiful. amazing cars. The most difficult part is picking the cars that you want to pick for the awards. Yeah. And, and some are starting to branch out and push the lemon going in no different directions, I'm saying here. We have uh, the newest members are Rat Rods. And believe it or not, there are Rat Rod Woodies. <laughs> there are. Now, you're transitioning out today. You're going to breathe a sigh of relief when you can walk off that platform and say, Whew. <laughs> My voice will return. It will. Happily. It will. <laughs> so uh, we have Tom McDonald over here who's joining us now, who is the incoming president. You're about to take on this heavy responsibility. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you doing? Very good. Um, are you ready for this task? <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be. It's It's been an interesting year watching everything happen, and uh, I've been taking in as much as I can to get ready for this day. Well, this car right behind me has uh, some absolutely perfect wood on it. I hear a lot of people say it's the most perfect wood on the whole property here. Well, that's what I've been told. It was my first shot at it, and it came out good. You were telling me earlier, uh, you're getting requests from other people saying they want you to do wood for them. You said, once is enough, you're not going to go through that process again. <laughs> exactly. It's a, it's a lot more work than it looks like. Yeah. Tell us about the car. Well, it's a 1951 Ford Woody. Uh, the kit was done by me. I, I sanded it, varnished it. It took about three months, and it was uh, it, it took a long time to do it. So. Well, the fact that you've been a Woody guy for seven years, and in seven short years, you're already president of the association. You must have got good training somewhere. Where do you work? 
I work for a company called McGuire. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they make car wax. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what do you do for that company? I'm the quality <laughs> assurance manager and the director of help with training and such. So Talon's been with us for a lot of years, and he talked to us about becoming a witty guy a long back and, and said it might take a little extra time off, off work once in a while if I could do that. We said, go for it, man. And, and we've just watched you just get so excited about Woody's, and now for you to move in as president of the club, I mean, we're really proud of you. Really well, are. thank you. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's been an absolute <laughs> blast. It's, it's great to be a part of this. Really yeah, we're glad to have him. Yeah, I know you are. And if you speak anymore, you're going to lose your voice. <laughs> thank so you. Very glad. Thank Fox you. And Tom McDonald. Thank you, guys. Thank go you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy at the Woody Show at the Doheny State Beach in Southern California. A great day to be out with these Woodies. The only television station that is resident in Orange County is KDOC. It has a transmitter up on Mount Wilson where NBC and ABC and all the other networks have it. And uh, so we kind of love KDOC and the, the new head of that, the CEO of KDOC is Bert Ellis and he's a car guy. So this works really well for us. Uh, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, KDOC is uh, the logo is a 51 Ford Woody. Uh, His office is about a block away from ours. So we We've struck a friendship and really appreciate it. We're glad you're in Orange County here with us. I'm glad too. And uh, revolutionizing this this station that has been very popular. I mean, it has a lot of viewers, but we kind of like you going back to the classics and old cars and surfing and whatever. It's just it's just perfect for us. Well, it's, <laughs> the station will be 25 years old in October, so it's got uh, you know got roots in Orange County. The DOC stands for Dynamic Orange County, and between the Woody and uh, and the programming we're doing and trying to focus on the surf culture and just you know just good you're, good fun. You're doing this stuff. I mean, you're capturing some of the old car guy stuff and you, the surfing, uh, the it's Endless Summer, all these old surf movies you're bringing out for us. We will launch Endless Summer again on television and you know, Bruce Brown and I have done a deal and uh, we're picking up all the great surf movies we can you know, to package up with the other programming on KDOC. And of course the signal does not just reach Orange County, it's all Southern California. Well, it's a full LA it's station. Full LA station. We just so. happen to be the only one that's, that's going right. to focus that's on right. Orange County and so the Inland Empire. If you live anywhere in Southern California, I mean these cables and whatever, you never know what station it shows up on, but look for KDOC. Great station for car guys. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Good to see you again. David Holmes has one cool 46 Merc with a great history to it. I love it. Really good history. It was uh, made for a naturalist who focused on birds, and he had it built to go out and run around the desert and the mountains taking pictures of birds. Certainly has a different look to it, doesn't it? <laughs> a different stance. <laughs> right. Well, it, that's what attracted it to me. You don't see a lot of four four wheel drive woodies, and especially when it's been camperized like this one. That's so. right. Right. The story. You got to tell us this story about the history of it. And one very special lady. Well, I was lucky enough to have some old pictures of it when it was new and being used, and I had those pictures at another show, and all of a sudden a guy taps me on the shoulder and says, "Hey, my mom used to be married to that bird watcher guy." So I had these pictures of this beautiful woman sitting on one of the fenders, and I said, hey, does this look like her? Is her name Joyce? He said, yeah. And I said, call her up. I want to talk to her. So <laughs> we, we've stayed in touch, and she loves coming so out here. So she came and met up with you and saw the car for the first time in 50 Nin years? Or yeah, something? that was in 97 yeah. at the, at the Wave Crest show. And her name again is Joyce? Joyce Hassing. Joyce Hassing. Joyce was just here a few minutes ago. We were talking with her. And just, she just in her glory, thinking about being reunited yeah, with this she car. she loves the attention she gets here. She, there's people coming around looking for autographs and <laughs> all, all this stuff. She loves it. She was even in the movies. She was in a Tarzan movie or something? She was in a bunch of movies. Um, Tarzan and the She-Devil in 1952. She was in some movie with Bogart and all kinds of people. <laughs> Interesting history. It really yeah. is. What do you think about this show? This is always a great show if you can uh, get in between the rainstorms. Yeah. It's, it's always good. We had rain yesterday, maybe a little rain tomorrow, but today? That's okay. <laughs> That's why I chickened out and didn't come down yesterday. <laughs> nothing, nothing nice at a Woody show right on the beach. I mean, it's pretty cool. Right, but the, the irony would be the guy with the macho 4x4 Woody that didn't want to get it wet, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, we're a good save today. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thank Appreciate you. It. We caught up with the man, the president of the National Winning Club, Craig Johnson. Craig, 
another great event for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Could it be any better? It's pretty spectacular. We do have these Woody events all over the country. You get to go to all of them, enjoy them. And, yes, uh, I do. Have more fun than you deserve. That's exactly right. More fun than anybody, probably. Six years you've been president of the National Club. Yeah, I've been affiliated with them for 15 years, and uh, from being uh, secretary to uh, vice president to president, and I really like it a lot. Yeah, I guess you do. I do. I like it. Woody show up at all types of shows across the country, but as far as, far as standalone events, how, how many would there be? Probably about 10. I mean, everywhere that there's Woody's, but of course it's a, an east-west coast kind of a thing, and then it gets yeah. a little bit more sparse when you get to Absolutely, the because it, it does go with the, with the good weather, doesn't yes, it? I mean, it you does. have to be careful with Woody's. It you does. get them in bad weather, you got a problem. Yeah, well, you don't have them anymore. They return to the earth, like we do. <laughs> Craig, your involvement with Woody's goes back probably as long or longer than anybody else here in the property. Why are Woody guys so special? They are special because uh, they have always been special. These are organic guys with their organic cars, and they love the surf, and they love the sun, and they love the company of each other. And it's been that way since I had my first one when I was 13 years old. They 13? 13. Really? Uh, my father, uh, the, he had problems with me when I towed it home from the junkyard. And uh, he said, get that thing out of here. But he was helping me work on it the next day. And uh, it worked out real well. Wow. Wow. But uh, great people. You know, they always have been. I, I don't think I've met anybody in uh, the 50 years that I've been that messing with these things that I, I wouldn't like to talk to again. I've never seen a Woody that I didn't like, <laughs> for sure. Talk about what's happened in, 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 in the area of Woody's over the last five years. It seems to me it's, it's just changed dramatically. You, you put it in some words for us. Well, it's, it's true supply and demand, and there's a lot more demand than there is supply. The very, very people that can afford the cars uh, have to be having jobs and stuff like that. They can't be the surf bums anymore. But it is changing. You know, you've got fiberglass Woody's now, and you've got uh, phantom Woody's coming out, and two doors and no doors. And, and uh, the day of the stock cars is... Uh, Vast disappearing. They want to use their cars. That's right. All the stock ones seem to be going into museums and leaving the country, and and pretty soon you won't see them. You just won't see them. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Thank Craig you. Johnson, Thank president you. for six years. Thank you very on behalf much. of everybody. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. Let's find out how car crazy you are. In 1913, Robert Bamford and Lionel Martin formed Aston Martin and by 1915 produced their first car, the Coal Scuttle. It had a 1,400cc engine and a four-speed transmission. What was its top speed? Was it A, 50 miles per hour, B, 70 miles per hour, C, 90 miles per hour, or D, 110 miles per hour? We'll see how fast you are with the answer a little later in the show. to the LA Auto Show this year, the car that caught my eye more than any other was the Gijaro Mustang. Unbelievable car. And I've been seeing it several times since, and of course, all the articles. Fabrizio Gijaro is the man, and uh, I thought we'd catch up right. Fabrizio, talk about this car. I mean, first off, your design house is so incredible. But doing a Mustang, it must get more respect in America than it does in Italia. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's strange for an Italian to do such a, a, an icon. And, you know, I can't make any Ferrari because the Ferrari is spinning Farina, so I could have the, the authorization from Ford to, to do something like this. It's an example of our uh, creativity. We have to study a lot the story of the Mustangs of the past. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's a retro design. It's an icon and it means that on this kind of line of styling there is the typical DNA of a Mustang. You see and yeah. maybe could be designed by an American, not by me. It, it, it is distinctively Mustang. You know it's a Mustang, yeah. but with such lines, like it just, it's, it's, it's Italian. <laughs> it's Italian because it's a little bit short. I make it a little bit shorter for my road in my, right, my right, town, right. you know, because I use a lot in Italy and people became crazy because nobody knows the Mustang anyway. It's, it's, it's really, really yeah, amazing. It's really so, fun. So we're going to see this car? There's a possibility. Uh, ask Ford. Ask uh, Ford. I, mean, uh, I hear maybe. <laughs> no, it looks like so. No, maybe not. You know. <laughs> if you visit our museum in Italy, maybe you can see it again right now. There's no plan unlucky right now. You have such a wonderful design house. All the cars you were. Uh, and, and beyond cars. In 40 I mean. years, uh, my father and at the end also myself, we made uh, quite interesting cars. Really? Yes, where okay. we have fun every day. You I know you do. Fabrizio, thanks Thank so much. All right, good. All the best. 
How fast was that first Aston Martin back in 1915? We'll find out right after this break, right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. Let's find out how car crazy you are. In 1913, Robert Bamford and Lionel Martin formed Aston Martin, and by 1915, produced their first car, the Coal Scuttle. It had a 1,400cc engine and a four-speed transmission. What was its top speed? Was it A, 50 miles per hour, B, 70 miles per hour, C, 90 miles per hour, or D, 110 miles per hour. Originally, Bamford and Martin began as a partnership that modified and sold Singer automobiles. And the pair soon decided to design and build their own cars. Using Martin's name and the Aston Hill races, the Aston Martin name was born and produced its first car in 1915. Though it would take five years before a second car was built, the original Coal Scuttle built anticipation for the next model with its impressive top speed of B, 70 miles per hour. Almost 100 years later, Aston Martin still maintains its sterling reputation for performance vehicles. And if you knew this piece of automotive trivia, you must be car crazy. And now our host, Barry McGuire. I love reading your car crazy confessions and you know some of them are so funny and some of them are really touching and this one today is in that latter category. Bob uh, DeLeonardi writes to us, he says, my story is a little different, but I hope you'll still find it of interest and understand the vital role the car hobby has played in my life. I apologize for the length of this email, but the journey has been a long one and has it ever. I'm 47 years old and have been car crazy as long as I can remember. For my 10th birthday, the only gift I wanted was to sleep overnight in my father's cutlass and be allowed to sit in the driver's seat and play with all the knobs and switches. At age 12, I began saving for my first car, which I bought immediately after getting my driver's license. Four years later, a 1972 Triumph Spitfire Mark IV. It was white with a tan interior, and yes, I can still remember how it smelled. <laughs> I tinker with the car constantly, making plenty of mistakes along the way, but learning a lot too. After a couple years, I sold the Triumph and bought a 73 Porsche 914, beginning a lifelong infatuation with those fun little cars. As I went through college, I had a success of cheap but interesting cars and kept well connected to the car hobby via car magazines, clubs, and shows. In 1984, at age 24, however, my life took an abrupt turn. I was diagnosed with adult onset stills disease, a kind of ultra-aggressive rheumatoid arthritis with, in my case, a very poor prognosis. I can honestly say that my love of the car hobby is quite simply the only way I've made it through the challenges this disease has thrown my way over the last 23 years. I'm blessed with an incredible wife and four wonderful children whose love and support is invaluable. I'm sure it is. With any serious illness, however, sometimes it boils down to you versus the disease and no one else can stand in your shoes. You need to draw on inner strength and motivation to get through. And for me, much of that motivation is my love for cars. The disease gradually attacks and destroys all the joints in my body, so they either have to be surgically fused, replaced with artificial joints, or become non-functional. I've had seven operations in the last four years and have five artificial joints. Man. During the long recovery process, cars have motivated me and kept me engaged in life. When my ankle joints were replaced and my feet in cast, I learned to drive my BMW using hand controls. When my hits were replaced, I went through the difficult physical therapy. I pictured being able to drive a stick shift again and did one more leg lift or curl. And two years ago, I faced the greatest test when I was told that the disease had attacked my cervical spine and I had to have immediate surgery or face quadriplegia. And after that very difficult spine surgery, I lived for four months in a metal halo brace fastened around my head and to my shoulders. Can you imagine? I couldn't take a shower or sleep in the bed for months, but I could watch Car Crazy and other car guy shows, and they were an invaluable temporary escape from my difficulties. Whenever I felt especially overwhelmed during my time in the halo, I would go to my window, push the button on the garage opener, and watch the door open a show by beautiful Celine Mustang. It always lifted my spirits. 
Doctor said I'd probably never be able to turn my head enough to drive anymore. But with perseverance, I proved them wrong. Several weeks after getting out of my halo, I was able to load up the Mustang with all four of my kids, put the top down, and drive to a local car show. Can you imagine? It was one of the best days we've ever had, with each of us finding something of interest and inspiration. My 14-year-old son is already saving up for an old Lincoln like the one he saw at that show. Despite what I've lived through and what lies ahead, I have many blessings in my life and my lifelong love for cars and the power my car craziness has to motivate me is key among them. I'm sure there are many of your viewers with similar challenges. Thank you so much for giving us an outlet, a gathering point, and a purpose. Best regards, Bob DeLeonardi. Well, you, you know, if there is anything I've learned after doing this show and reading your letters for more than 10 years now, is that you don't have to be old enough to drive a car, wealthy enough to own a car, or healthy enough to drive a car to be a car guy, because in the end, it is this emotional, psychological attachment that we have for cars that defines us as car guys, far more than the cars themselves. You know, think about it. Two people can get in the very same vintage car at different times and have entire different experiences. For a non-car guy, it can be an uncomfortable, noisy, and quite frankly, inconvenient way to reach a destination. But oh, for a car guy, for a real car guy, that same kind of ride in the very same car can produce a lifelong ministry that you never want to end. The difference is this emotional attachment that we have for cars. Either you have it or you don't, and most people don't, and they don't understand this emotion that we have for cars. That's why we call this show Car Crazy. And for those of you who are extraordinarily emotional about cool cars, you are certifiably car crazy, which is a distinction that carries with it a whole lot of perks. And that's what Bob's talking about. He's in the zone, the car crazy zone. And by his own words, being car crazy has played a vital role in his survival of more than 20 years of this debilitating disease and kept him going right through four months of this metal halo brace around his head and shoulders. Can you believe it? Wow. And by using his remote garage door opener from his window on a regular basis, he gained strength from being a car guy. He determined to drive his baby one more time. And then it really happened. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, for doing us proud and for making all of us just a little bit more car crazy. And for the rest of you, I want you to know that I personally read every car crazy confession that we receive. And you know what? Every single one of them is so, so special. If you haven't sent me your story yet, why not do it this week? Send your email to confessions at carcrazycentral.com. Thank you for watching our show this week because this episode and every episode is intended to make you just a little bit more car crazy.